Hello, YouTubers. Um, today, I'm going to be discussing why you can use, why you should use toilet paper for your paper mache projects. Um, <clears throat> this has been sitting for half of a day today, specifically. Um, and I, what I did was I broke it up earlier today. And as you can see, the little lumps... Those, I believe those are the fibers that are holding it together. Now, let me try and show you here, because you're going to want to be familiar with how to work with this. Generally, if you're doing this with a fork and breaking it down, let's say you don't have a uh, food processor, you can take, the, take it and push it up against the bowl or the jar you're using and apply pressure. Sometimes if you're in a bowl, you can take the fork and go down. Now, if I start mixing this, okay, you'll see that it looks like cauliflower. But that's the way it is supposed to look before it gets really broken down even more. As you add flour and glue it will actually become more of a creamy consistency. I noticed that just through uh, the work that I've been doing. <clears throat> now I even took the paper that wraps the toilet paper and as an experiment I just threw it in there without ripping it up or anything to see how biodegradable it is. So that's what I'm pulling out right now as we speak. This is that, it looks like tissue paper, but it's not. <clears throat> so this hasn't broken down on its own, whereas the toilet paper will. Now, more than likely, before I start making my normal recipe, I'm going to pull out that paper that hasn't broken down. I'm going to cut it up with a scissor and put it back in. Or I might leave it out and just uh, throw it out. Um, it'll break down in Mother Nature, no problem. But, uh, <clears throat> let me see if I can show you. Let's see. Pushing the fork down on it, you'll see. No problem. Now, what I'll do generally is, I'll, I'm going to have this in a bowl later this evening. And I'm going to, oops, a part fell out. Can you believe that? I'm going to definitely uh, break this down even more, and I add the, uh, I use uh, Elmer's uh, glue, you can use, let me see if I have it here, I've been using this extra strong formula, safe and non-toxic, and uh, I've been using from Dollar Tree uh, this jock glue. It's not as good as the Elmer's Extra Strength glue because of the binder in there, but this will work just just as well. <clears throat> That's an option to add the uh, Elmer's glue. Um, and this also is uh, safe and non-toxic, as it says on the label there. And don't forget to add a dash of salt. You'll know, figure out how much. Um, do not add large, the larger salt. I recommend adding <clears throat> the, uh, well, actually, for this recipe, you could add a uh, larger grain salt or the smaller fine salt because with the amount of water you're going to use, it's going to break down. If you're using, if you're just making a clay, like flour clay, you have to use salt in it. And it doesn't necessarily break down. You can actually sometimes see it in there, um, even though you're adding water. Uh, so let's see if I can show you a side view of this. Yeah, see that? So I have the fork at the top. And let me see if I can focus this a little better. If I pause. Yeah, it's hard to show it from there. Maybe... Oh, here we go, where the lighting is better. 
So that's the fork them running it up against the wall and pushing it down with no problem. So generally they say two parts, uh, let's see, two to one ratio I'm seeing out there. I think it's two cups of flour, one cup of water if you're using flour, um, paper. Uh, I've just been generally eyeing it. Um, <clears throat> You know, because I add the glue through multiple stages while I'm breaking it down also. Uh, I've come, become familiar with the consistency that I want. For my initial stage, or my initial coating, I don't go crazy trying to make a smooth, ter wonderfully smooth mixture. If I, ha if I have to do a second layer, this will really, really be broken down. And... The final mixture, yes, it will be very smooth. Uh, you won't see any of these clumps at all. I have to break out my blender tomorrow. I have, believe it or not, uh, I have my vintage blender. I'm going to break that out tomorrow and run it. I think I have a gut feeling um, I'll become addicted to that blender because once I just see how smooth it is. Um, but I do believe <clears throat> very strongly that when you're first starting out doing the paper mache, that for the first four or five times, even though it might be extra work, you really should learn how to make it manually without a blender, using a fork or another type of manual tool, like mortar and pestle, if you have something like that. I firmly believe everyone should get themselves familiar and appreciate uh, what it what it requires to, to make things without machine. That's, that's really, in my opinion, part of the art experience. So that's why you see me doing this with a fork. I've done the same thing in woodworking. Uh, no electric drills, no electric saws, no electric nothing. Everything by hand. Hand cut, hand sanded, hand stained, hand glued, hand hammered. You really, you really have to, uh, in my opinion, learn how to do that. Um, and as you get older, and as you get more into whatever trade you're in, you're going to appreciate that. It's hard to explain, but for those of you that are, have done it, you don't need any explanation. Um, so that concludes this video. I just wanted to show you what it's like to use... Uh, toilet paper for paper mache. You know, it's, 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 first you might think, oh, toilet paper. Well, you know what? Here it is. It's clean. You just designate one roll to your, uh, art projects. Don't use it in the bathroom. That's not cool. Uh, this is my, I have a red strip there. This is my paper mache for use only, toilet paper. Um, next thing I'm going to try is uh, the piggy banks in the paper mache. I'm going to still use the cardboard as the frame, but it's just really amazing how sturdy the paper mache is when it dries. Although I wasn't planning on showing you, I figure I might as well. This is uh, I made a cardboard, customized cardboard box, and this is paper mache mixture, paper uh, paste, paper paste clay, paper, no clay in it, so you can't say paper clay, paper mache paste. Um, you can make a paper mache paste versus putting the strips of newspaper, you know, on top of your piece of art. So, the first round I made was pink, and all I did was I added uh, a customized mixture of paint that I made. But I didn't do the back, I did the back last. I gotta create my own type of special tool for this. But I will also, again, take my pocket knife, and I drop it in it. Is that amazing? It doesn't break. I'm running it back and forth. I'm banging on it, and it's as hard as a rock. It doesn't mean it won't break, but believe me, it really is amazing.
It's another reason why I wish I had gotten involved in this at least 20 years ago. I'm 45. I wish I had known, forget 20 years ago, try 25 years ago. I would have done this in high school. I would have done it in college. I would have made a, a living out of this. Oh, this is a good angle to catch. So I'm tapping on that. I want to knock on it because it's not exactly smooth. And you can sand this down, by the way, but I, I wanted this... Uh, see if I can get the camera to focus. I wanted this textured look. Now, I will not be leaving uh, this like that. Um, the only reason why I did this side was I had so much one night... And I generally don't like, I don't like putting it in the fridge or letting it sit. I have generally have a rule, whatever I make that day, I use the same day. So I decided to put it on the inside of this box, because pink and black always make a nice contrast. And this inside here was from another night. So again, I didn't want it to go to waste. So what I think I'm going to do there is make a mixture of Maybe like silvery, pinkish, glittery background. Um, you can see how it comes out. And I'm going to smooth out uh, these edges tonight with the next batch that I make. And uh, the outside of the box has its own unique pattern that comes from applying... Not only just applying the paper mache, but I also I wrap these in uh, paper too. I upcycle, so I wrap these in paper so the edges don't show. And what happened was when I applied the paste, the box took on a life of its own, which is understandable because there's moisture involved. So this started to buckle outwards. So all I have to do is reseal this also. And I'll probably just use a little paper mache there as a filler because it dries, as you can see, pretty much rock hard. I won't say as hard as a rock, but it's rock hard. Uh, in fact, if I take a rock, oops, I turned my light off, sorry. Uh, oops, I dropped the rock. Um, yep, yeah, kind of an attention problem there. Uh, here's a rock. Okay, and let's see, wait a minute, this is about, just to show you all the dimensions of what we're dealing with here, because it doesn't show in the video that well. We're dealing with close to three inches of depth, whatever that, whatever the word is. So when I drop this rock in there, you're going to know that it fell at least three inches. I'm actually holding it about an inch up from the box. And I'm going to drop it. And you're going to listen for the noise. In fact, I'm going to throw it over here. It might hit this wall and then bounce down there. That's what I'm going to do. Here we go. See that? And even better yet, now that the rock is in the box, let me shake it a little. See? So that really shows you. It's like a, a cement. As I move the box around, I mean the rock in the box, and it's not even breaking. So that's why with my piggy banks, which I highlight on my Instagram account, I'm reserving this uh, YouTube channel specifically for my, uh, what's this called again? Paper mache. Yeah, paper mache projects. I'm be making piggy banks. Uh, got two requests already, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make uh, line the inside and the outside of these with uh, the paper mache. Um, I've had a couple of people come to me and say, "Oh, you could use epoxy. You can use resin." I mean, we have enough resin and epoxy in Mother Nature. I mean, uh, I'm very big on the upcycling. So those boxes are boxes that would want, yeah, they might recycle them, but even the recycling process is releasing chemicals into the air. 
mean, those boxes, it's, you're going through the similar process of making, remaking a box. When you recycle a box, you're breaking it, they're breaking it down and they're remaking a box. However, what is good about recycling is the boxes that you all put out in the trash on trash day, that's, those are less trees that are cut down. So even though recycling boxes is not a hundred percent, you know, uh, avoiding chemical exposure to the planet, it's helping a, a great, huge, uh, in a great, huge way. Um, because obviously people that buy upcycled art and us artists that reuse paper, boxes, anything we can reuse to make art that would wind up in your home is one less pound of really harmful plastic. Now, plastic itself is not harmful. It's the way we have been handling it. People throwing trash out in the streets all the time when I'm bicycling and riding. I see it all the time. You see videos on TV of ducks and fish and dolphins and otters and all sorts of animals getting caught in plastic, eating plastic and then starving to death. Seagulls with those soda can things, the, 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 the six-pack uh, plastic things. So that's why I'm very big on the upcycling, the recycling of anything you can use uh, to make uh, the art. Um, now, that being said, I think that's going to be it for tonight. Oh, I will show you one other paper mache project I'm working on. Uh, this is uh, my hand, and these fingers bend. Um, probably should have made the fingers a little s smaller, but I had taken, let me see if I can show you here. I took one of my hands originally and I traced it. And then when you wrap it in the paper, it makes it bigger. Um, but that's actually my hand. Um, and I'm going to make it like a little bowl in here. And I, I want to have, I think what I want to have is uh, have these bent forward so that people can put their rings on them. And there's different sizes of rings. Um, now that's maybe one idea I have. But I have many hands that I'm going to be making. So if you'd like a helping hand or you need a hand, uh, I'm the guy to call. No pun intended. Yeah, I had to, I had to throw in the hand joke. Uh, if you buy one of these, you know, you'd be giving me a hand, actually. Uh, okay, I can't help it. A little humor there. Uh-oh. Uh, pretty soon... You're going to actually see me on the videos, the artist and the founder of Blast of Our Past. Uh, just rearranging my studio, making some changes so that it looks at least somewhat professional. All right, well, that's it for tonight. That was, uh, I think we did three videos today, but there's going to be a lot more coming. And I can't wait to get lessons for you guys. Uh, right now, we don't have many viewers here. But just like Instagram, I started out with one follower, and in less than six months on Instagram, I have 1,606 followers. So eventually more people will be involved in this uh, video. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope you enjoy uh, learning more about papier-mâché.